What's up, family? This is your boy, Sam P., rap artist and founder of Renew Your Mind Music. You can check out me and my squad's latest singles on thebookkeeper247.com, 520collective.com, and renewyourmindrecords.com. Hearts over hits. Renew your mind for the glory of God. Yo, what up, everybody? This is Mitch Darrell, uh, and this, uh, before we start, this is brought to you by myself and Bookkeeper247. Uh, you can follow them at Bookkeeper247 on Twitter or uh, TBK247 on Google. You can find their website. Uh, and then if you want to follow me, it's at Mitch Darrell underscore on Twitter and at Mitch Darrell on Instagram and everything else. So today we got my homie, TC, the collector. What's up, brother? What's good, bro? Just chilling. Nothing much, man. Thanks for being my first official interview. <laughs> uh, hey, it's man, it's fun. Honor. It's honor. Sweet, it. man. So we're going to dive right into it. I This will be fun for me because I know some about you, but not a lot. So I can learn about you and other people can as well. So I got to ask first, how did you come up with your name? Well, I got TC because my real name is Matthew, right? So, in the Bible, he was a tax collector. Uh, so, I went with the collector, but then I just I just cut it short because it just seemed too much. Right. So I just went with TC. And I like that. It just stuck. See, I didn't even stuck. know that. That's super dope. <laughs> I didn't even know your real name until now. <laughs> Very dope. Um, now you got a little story you can tell with your name too. It like means something. Um, how long have you been rapping, would you say, officially rapping? I'll say probably been rapping maybe like four or five years, but it wasn't until like maybe two years that I really took it serious. Dude, that's like my exact story. (laughs) Four or five years and then taking it serious for about two, last two, three years. Yeah. Really? It's crazy. Yeah, man. (laughs) Um, what got you into rapping? Like, what made you want to even, you know, get into it? Really, I just love listening to hip hop music. Mm-hmm. And it was, you know, I did it, you know, on the side, you know, like a little hobby type thing. But um, I remember when I got to church and um, I would do it to help me. That's how I kind of weaned myself off of mainstream music. Yeah. So a brother in the church heard it. In my car one day, he was like, oh, let me get a copy of that. I didn't know he was going to do it. Right. So I gave him a copy. All I know is the next, I think it was the next service at night. I walk in and the music's playing on the speakers. I'm like, oh, man. Doing, bro? <laughs> then my pastor was like, wait, you do music like this? I was like, for myself. She was like, no, nah, I got to do that for the Lord. And that's, that's how it began. That's great. That's one cool thing about us artists is like, we never start how you think. Like, no one's ever really like, I grew up and like knew I wanted to be a rapper and I like was going to become exactly. the like, it's always like I wasn't even looking for rap and I ended up being, because I have a, not the same story as you, but it wasn't like something I intentionally was looking to do. It just kind of accidentally happened. And then it turns out it's like exactly. you're calling. You find out you kind of, God's giving you a talent for it. And it's like, i found this for a reason, you know? Exactly. <laughs> How did you, when did you figure out that there's a space for our type of music? And like, when did you officially be like, I want to be in Christian hip hop? Well, after, you know, the brother who took my music and basically gave it out, um, he had put me on to Christian hip hop because I didn't even know that was a thing. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember we had, um, I had a Christian bookstore where we live and they had like this space where you can go down and they allow you to listen to music there and everything. So he took me there he was like, listen to this. He handed me, it was Triple E 2020. I remember it. He was like, listen to this. And I'm like, oh no. <laughs> then I played it and I was like, wow, these boys snapping for the Lord. I was like, okay. Then he put me on to a whole bunch of more people. And I was like, okay, so there's a space for this. Mm-hmm. But I wasn't comfortable enough or even trying to jump into that. I was just like, all right, I'll just keep doing it for the church and yeah. for the community. And I'll just keep it that way. But I just kept pressing and pressing. I'm talking to like prophets coming in the house talking about you supposed to be doing music. And I'm like, mm, I don't know. Yeah. But I was like, you know what? I'm going to take it serious and I'm going to do And I'm just going to step out. But I think 
well, I was put on to Christian hip hop way before I actually jumped into it. Really? It was just I was just, I was just a fan of it and just fan of certain artists. But I don't know, probably like maybe six years. Probably like six years ago, I knew about it, but didn't really dive into it until like two two years ago. Who are some of your favorite Christian hip hop artists? I would say Triple E, KB, uh, Bizzle. Uh, I like Ishan. All the OGs. <laughs> yes. Um, but now that I've jumped into it, you know, there's an indie. Now I'm exactly. finding all these talented indie artists. I'm like, wow. So now I have, I can, the list can go on and on and on, but mm-hmm. there's a lot that I have on my, my playlist now. So that's what's dope about our space is like, I met you in the indie collective, 520 collective. Yeah. It's like, that's how you, there's a ton. So there's the people that everyone knows, of course, all the signed artists, but then it's like, there's hundreds, if not thousands of indie artists who are like on the come up that make great music. They just don't yes. necessarily have that following. Um, like you, for example, I'm a fan of yours, and it's like you're one of the most talented yet underrated people, like in our space. I feel like I feel like if really? you're, you're one of those artists where I feel like if more people just heard you, they'd be fans, you know. Like, and there's a lot like that. I feel like Chris Noel's in that category too. Wow. It's like because yes. your last project is really good, and we'll get to that in a second. Um, but it's like your rapping ability, and that's something I respect a ton in artists. Is like, can you actually rap? Is like up there, man. Um, it's just like, we could get you in front of these people. <laughs> you gotta, no, and I feel like that'll happen for you for sure. Um, uh, all in his time anyway. Um, but speaking bro, of- Bro, the feeling is so mutual though. Thank you. It's mutual, bro. Trust me. You were one of the first ones, the indies that I was listening to. And I was like, man, this bro have ways with words. Mm-hmm. That's why when you told me that you like, what you said, two, three years, I'm like, no way. <laughs> no way. <laughs> like no, it's God. A hundred percent. Because people always be like, "You've been doing this for a long time." I'm like, honestly, I didn't even know what Christian hip hop was until maybe three years ago. And like, I really wasn't rapping for real till like 2017. And even then, I wasn't really very good. So it's just like kept going. I felt like God wanted me to do it, or else I would have quit by now. You know what I'm saying? Um, exactly. So I appreciate. Well, you, I, got, I put you on to my wife too, bro. She really? likes the music too. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. That means a lot to me. Of course, I got my little kids, everything, man. Trust hey. me, bro. The feeling is very mutual, bro. Thank you. We're going to come up <laughs> together, man. We're going to be telling this story in about four or five years. <laughs> exactly. Well, speaking yes. of your rapping ability, how would you kind of describe your style? Like, is there a certain style you try to go for? You just kind of go with whatever comes to you? I just, every time I've asked that question, it's hard to answer it. Right. It's like, I don't know. It's just... <laughs> It's really however the Holy Spirit give it to me at that moment. And I hear the beat and it's just, bro, like without the Holy Spirit, I'm garbage. I, even when you're saying that, I still don't even think that I'm even nowhere there. I still work day and night on that, on the craft, but right. I don't know. It's hard to, my style. I don't know. It's just like when I hear it, the Holy Spirit just give it to me. And it's I just, you, I be trying to rap faster or I be trying to rap slower. It's just, I don't know. I can't rap fast as you though, but you know, it's, <laughs> and I've tried, and it's just, it don't work for me. But one day, but I don't know. It's it's hard for me to answer that. Not for you. That style thing. You have a very what's a? It's probably a good thing because it's like certain artists you can tell they're derivative of others. Like bittersweet thing. I get compared to Kendrick a lot, and that's gonna happen because he's my favorite rapper, and I, he influences me a ton. So I spent the last three years trying to, I'm not going to fully get rid of the Kendrick influence, but I am trying to build my own sound within that. Whereas yeah. with you now, like you don't have influence, but it's like you weren't necessarily going for a certain sound. Like you don't really sound like anybody I can think of. Like I don't listen to you and go like, he sounds like this, that, and the other. He sounds like TC, you know? Um, I think I did mention on the song we did, your flow at times is um, kind of like, you know, baby. Yeah. He kind of, like, at least on certain songs, you kind of have the rhythm, like, the cadence that he does at times, which is real smooth, um, which I like a lot. But even that, you're not, you switch it up all the time, you know? Um, wow, the baby. Okay. Yeah, man. I'm a big the baby fan because Charlotte, <laughs> 704. <laughs> 
Yo, yo, what up, what up? It's your boy, Get'em J. I rock with the bookkeeper 24-7 all day, every day. Check out my new music, Alexander, available everywhere. Holler at your boy. Okay. But uh, let's see. So you put out a project. What month was that again? Ooh, uh, two months ago. I think that was, um, yeah, I think that was in uh May had it been May. I think it was close to I was trying to think if it was um close to before the pandemic or if it was like toward the beginning of the Yeah, pandemic. it was close beef. Well, it was almost like right before it got heavy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was right before it got heavy. Yeah, I remember because I had already moved into this new place and I was playing on my speakers. Um so yeah, it was definitely quarantine time. Did you have how long have you been working on that album for? And remind us I, what's the name of the album, by the way. Uh Promising that, um, yeah. I started working on that at probably early November. Nice, last pretty week. quick turnaround. Yeah, it's strange how fast I be getting lyrics, but um, <laughs> it was like, yeah, I'll say November, and I probably finished. I'm gonna say February. Okay, and and then that's when I was just like, you know, just praying, just seeing what God wanted to leave with features. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm not, I remember hitting you up because that was always on my mind. Like, yeah, I gotta, <laughs> got to like, I, I have to, Lord. I'm forced. <laughs> so, so it was. I think I had finished everything about about February. Yeah, but the first thing I got was the title though, and I just ran with it. So did you, so you came up with the title, and then you were like, you had the theme. That's what you were going to make it thematically. Yeah, I had came. I, I came with the title. The title came to me around November, Promised Land, and I was mm-hmm. like, "Okay, Lord, I got the title. Where do you want me to do with that?" Exactly. And and really, it just I got that. Then went straight to the intro right. of the project, and I just springboard from there. Just we're all trying, like every day, every all of us are trying to get to what a Promised Land, whatever yeah. it may be in life, right? Exactly. You know, career. Whatever it is, it's a promised land to us. Mm-hmm. And along that journey, we're going to go through many things, many trials, tribulations. And what I try to do is touch on things that a little bit of things that I've experienced on mm-hmm. my journey, you know, to my promised land gotcha. and just shed light on it. Like, you know, we're human, we we'll make mistakes along that line and right. just knowing that it's not going to be easy because any, 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 anything that's easy isn't going to last. Isn't worth it. Yeah, facts. <laughs> did so, you have any, speaking of easy, did you have any songs that were hard to write or hard to finish? Yeah. And if so, like, why were they harder to, to write? Yeah, I did. Um, the song Remember, that one was a hard one. Mm-hmm. It was hard to finish. Um, well, it was hard. Honestly, I wasn't even going to put it on there. Really, and, um, and I think that was because that was more like a testimony song for me. And um, I remember listening to it, and I'm like, "No, I don't like this." <laughs> so I wasn't going to, but my wife listened to the whole thing in the car, and she came in the house, and she was like, "My favorite song is that 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 remember track." I said, "Well, it's not making the album." She was like, oh, "Okay." <laughs> I was like, "I don't like it." She was like, "You gotta put it out there." And crazy, people were liking that particular song. Right. So it was, it was that one. There was another one though. I'm trying to figure out which one it was. I know it was that and sick and tired. Mm-hmm. Sick and tired okay. was a hard one. That was literally one of the last songs I did because mm-hmm. I had to be sick and tired. Yeah. And I was, like you feel me? Like I can't just be talking about something and and I ain't walking it. And I was yeah, like, no, I feel you. And most of the time, when we talk about things, that test going to come. So I'm like, all right, Back. talk about this. <laughs> I know, Lord, you're going to send this test, Lord. And I got to be ready for it. So, yeah, those two songs, I would say, were probably the hardest. And remember, probably not even going to make it. But it right. did. Thank God it did, though. It's funny how things work. Yeah, because often it is the songs that were like, I don't know about this. Or like, this isn't the way. And then it's like, I always try my best to not cut something until I'm positive that I'm, it's not going to work because some of those songs end up being the best ones. And you're like, I almost didn't make this. Like this song was great. Or like this, exactly. you know what I'm saying? It could be your most popular song. 
um, even if you don't love it, somebody else might like it for reasons that you don't like it. Um, exactly. Bro. That's like in. half of my project. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Would you say this is your, so how many albums do you, or projects do you have out? Was this your debut or do you have a, a couple projects you put out well, before this? Well, I, ha- I had one last year. Right. When I, it was uh, in Perfectville. Mm-hmm. I remember but, that. You know, I would, nobody really knew me or anything like that, so it didn't really get no buzz. No one knew it was out. Right. A lot of people believe this was like my first project. Your debut, yeah. And even you know, I take that. You know, if you believe it's the first, it's the first. Yeah. It kind of yeah. felt like that though. So I'm not gonna lie. It kind of like the first one. I didn't have you know, I wasn't nervous or anything like that. But mm-hmm. this one, you get the butterflies up to the release. Yeah, that's how you know. <laughs> yeah. Nervousness, and it's just like so. It felt like a big thing. So I would yeah. say this one was it. I feel like as artists, we can kind of decide what our debut is. Cause it's like, I put out three projects before Dreadhead Lando. But like you said, like no, they were kind of on SoundCloud at first. I didn't put them on store in stores later. Um, I didn't really have that feeling. I didn't really have anybody waiting on it. It was just kind of throw it out there. But once like yeah. Lando, that was a thing where people kind of knew who I was. It felt like the first piece of work I'd like put out. Even to this day, it's like the first thing people really find in me. So it's like, if anyone asks, it's like, I mean, I yeah, I had some, you call them like mixtapes or just like little projects you did before. Yeah. But like, this is my debut. This is where it like started. Um, so start here. And this is where it all counts, you know? Yeah. And that's how it is for me. Like I had a whole bunch like on the side, but mm-hmm. you know, I did that within, you know, my own city, my own church. Right. It didn't get released. Yeah. You yeah, know, yeah out yeah. there. It might have hit SoundCloud, but then I probably took it down. Yeah. But you know, if you bump into somebody who know me, they're probably gonna have like a trunk full of like little mixtapes. Yeah. Like this one, like you were saying, like like this one feels like this is like the main All right. one. Yeah. Super dope, man. Let's see. Uh do you have it's hard because this year's been really bad, but like do you have any goals musically for the rest of 2020? Anything you wanna do, anything you're trying to challenge yourself to do? Oh, uh, really? Like you said, this year has been like crazy. It's, yeah, <laughs> and like all my goals have like moved to like personal, real life mm-hmm. type goals. That's like, a good thing. You know, just trying to help you know with my wife and stuff like that with schooling, but music. Um, honestly, I wasn't going to try to drop anything after yeah. Promise Land because it took so much. Exactly, album. It's usually like I need a vacation. <laughs> exactly. And then, you know, I was just going to focus on, like, the features I have coming up. But I told myself, no, I ain't going to listen to anything. But then when I got, you know, dudes like you keep dropping music, and it just (laughs) encourages me, I'm like, man, I got to get back on this too, man. Right. And so I guess the goal would be that I want to drop, like, a little EP before the year's out. Okay. Super dope. Yeah, because that's that's something I've learned is, like, one – the way the industry works now is everybody has a short attention span. So it's like artists mm-hmm. at the top, like on major labels are being told to drop once a year, like a whole album once a year, unless you're like Kendrick or like Drake, um, mm-hmm. because you might make good music, but it's like, people are like, they'll literally listen to your product. It's like watching a Netflix series. It's like, it comes out January 1st, you finish it by January like 7th. And then it's like, where's the next season? Where's that? Like, no exactly. one's wanting to wait. Everyone's got, okay, what's next? What's next? So it's like, I always tell myself, like, even right now, I'm about to put out my album and I'm like, I'm taking a break after this. But it's, a, it's also like, one, I can't stop myself from writing because it's fun. Two, people are still going to be like, yo, I know you just put out 14 songs, but when's that next single coming? And it's like, you got to have something ready or something um, or else people are going to forget about you, unfortunately. Um, it's true, though, because... But as humans, we have that, that what have you done for me lately? Exactly. Not, you know, they forget about everything you've already done. Mm-hmm. So like you said, you're going to drop this 14 album two months later. They're going to be like, oh, uh, what's coming next? What's next? <laughs> Singles and, you know, features don't suffice. So. Exactly. I try to do those too. Because the, the more, if you have something, a song you're on mixed with like an album one year and then an EP, all of that, you can stretch that out. Or like just some songs you record to keep in the tuck for whenever you don't, you have a space. Um, then people can't be on your back talking about where I haven't heard you. It's like, 
I'm on this guy's song. Check out his song. Or I got a, a random song, a freestyle I dropped or something. Um, so, yeah, it's it's tough. It's also good because I've learned the more you rap, the better you get. Like like when you just said you thought I'd been doing it five, six, seven years. No. But it's really over the three-year course, I've steadily gotten better. And I haven't taken a rap class or, like, done a bunch of study. I mean, I've done some studying. But really, it's just I just kept writing. And that means so you get better, so. Same here. I jump on every challenge I see. It's yeah. Just, oh, just, yeah. Just, You're quicker than me when it comes to those challenges. You really do. I thought I did all the challenges. You do all <laughs> the challenges. <laughs> I try, bro. I try. It, it, just, it sharpens you. So Facts. I see it and I got time. I'm going to do it. Facts. So. Dang, man. No, ch- that's super. I forgot. That's something we can talk about is challenges because, like, I've been trying to help the younger artists on ways to, like, get exposure and, like, Literally, my blueprint, I remember before I put out Dreadhead Lando, I was so excited, and I was like, yo, Dreadhead Lando is going to put me on the map. And, like, it did well, kind of, like, numbers-wise, but, like, what put me on the map, quote-unquote, was doing all the challenges. Because, like, yeah. no matter who you're doing a challenge for, like, that audience is going to see you. And, like, if there's a voting process, the voters are going to see you. Um, if you win, people are going to see you. So it's like, and plus you're getting better. And you meet the other artists that submitted and stuff. So it's like, you might as well do every challenge you see in Christian hip hop. Why not? It's a win win. Exactly. Get your name I out there. So they're going to have to watch you. <laughs> so if you're good, they're going to see you. They have to hear me. It, so it's just, and I'm, I met so many dudes through that, mm-hmm. you know, for indie Christian artists that I actually built relationships with. Right. The first time I heard you was on, it was on a challenge. I can't remember mm-hmm. which one it was. I think it was, uh, Shoot your shot. Yeah, your that Marcus Anthony. That was the one. And then when you dropped yours, I was feeling, I was like, wow, Lord, I'm feeling myself. When <laughs> you dropped yours, and I was like, I'm a ghost. I went ghost on social media. I, like, oh, <laughs> and I already knew it, though, but I was like, it was good, though, because it helps me sharpen. It pushes me. Then we build a relationship through that. And I was like, it's a win-win. So anyone right. I see, you know, I'm not really on social media that often, but what yeah. I am, and I see it, I got to jump on it. Yeah, I feel you, bro. Yeah, you'll you'll always you're always the first one too. It's always like <laughs> TP. I was like, oh yep, there's a new challenge. <laughs> Super dope, bro. Let's see. Um, I have a short term goals. As for long term, what are your goals with music? Like, do you have anything specific you want to accomplish during your career with music? Um, or is it just kind of you're just gonna do it? It's fun for you. Whatever happens, happens. Or is it like you have a, a specific goal? No, I don't think right now I don't have like a long term goal with it. It's just like I'm just what I like to. I guess I was asked that before, and I it's just I, the best way I put it is I'm just trying to be obedient. Like right. honestly, I wanted to retire three years ago before mm, I even there. <laughs> dropped anything, you know. And I'm like, I, you know, because I was doing it for so long, I'm like I don't have nothing left. So, but really, it's just. However, how, however the Lord leads me with it, however long He want me to keep doing it, you know, if the doors start opening, then things, you know, you know, I'm gonna have to, you know, change that up, you know, my long term goals. But right now, like you said, it's it's fun though. It's like I don't, it, it's strange to how to explain it, but it's just it's just fun to write because you, bro. it's almost like you spending time with the Lord as well though. Because me, I be talking to myself. You know, and it's just it'll, no one be in the room with me, and it's just I just man, I just be talking with the Lord, right? So it's fun to just do it, but and also to see you know to see the results of it is also a blessing as, as well, and that encourages me to keep going. But, but yeah, right now it's just however the Lord leads me with it. That's that's I a don't good, have no long term goal. That's a good mindset to have. Give me one second. I'll be back in. Two seconds. That's a good mindset to have um, because a lot of us artists will get caught up in the numbers game and kind of be checking yeah. the, the streams every two seconds or how many views that I get on this, how many this, that, and the other. And it's like, I think all of us have thought about quitting every once in a while. Like, I mentioned it recently, not because I don't love it, but it's like stressful, especially if your mindset is like, I'm trying to get big or like I'm not getting enough streams instead of like 
the, instead of taking the small victories, like it's cool that I've won contests. Yeah. Um, but what's better is like I've impacted seeing people that I've actually impacted with my music um, means more than like an award, you know? Exactly. Yes. I, I don't, I try my best not to get caught up in that rat race with the stats and checking the streams. Right. And, Cause if I did that, I would have been gave up. Exactly. <laughs> it's more of, you know, it's more of, you know, the behind the scenes that no one sees, you know, the encouraging messages, the DMs from people I don't even know, you know, it's that type of stuff that has more worth, more value to me than even if it was like 50 streams, mm -hmm. I'm going to be content with that. Lord, you exactly. gave me 50. Let me, let, let me be content with the 50, Lord. Because exactly. when you end little, you make it much. So it's just like, if it's 50, it's 50. That's fine, Lord. That's okay with me. If when it becomes not okay, mm -hmm. that's when you're going to, things are going to get worse. Then it gets exactly. stressful. And that's not, you, you can't force it. You, you got to just flow. Very wise, sir. Yeah, very accurate. Now, I think it's, I'm glad this is real fun, man, because like I'm not yes. just a media guy. It's like artist to artist. So it's like I completely feel everything you're saying. It's not like, <laughs> what's it like being a rapper? It's like after we get off this call, I'm probably about to check my stream. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, <laughs> or I might do another uh, contest that I see. So it's like, it's definitely fun. But I appreciate you being the uh, kind of the guinea pig for this. I think this is successful. Um, I'm, I'd love to have you on here again. We could talk even more uh, in depth, bro. Um, yes. Last thing I'll ask you it, bro. is, um, do you, well, two things. One, do you have a timeline for, if you're going to drop an EP, when would you be doing that? Around what what month? Uh, I would say probably maybe like October, you know, Right around Maybe Halloween. October-ish. Yeah, around there. Even though I could literally drop it next week because it's yeah. finished, but I'm just saying, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I will probably wait till that time because I have features that I'm trying to, I'm waiting for them to drop. So, yeah, you know, it's just, you know, the, you know what's going to happen to you when your album drop, all that anxiety <laughs> that tries to attach it's itself stressful. and everything which I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing, but you know, Thanks, with, you know, I don't want that right now. <laughs> Real life is stressful. To I feel you. I completely feel <laughs> you, man. Well, again, thank you, man. Um, how can the people find you? What's your socials? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at the collector TC. Even though you don't where, keep that much. Even though I'm not on there as much, <laughs> but when I'm on there, I try to stroll for at least 10 minutes so i yeah. can get everybody there you go but if you didn't hit my phone so i know so you know it's coming directly to me um i just jumped on instagram because hey. but um you know i'm still trying to work it so i'll say twitter the collector tc sweet bro i appreciate you man again i'll probably have you on again soon um and again everybody's brought to you by bookkeeper and mitch Terrell. So at Bookkeeper247, shouts out to Daryl over at Bookkeeper. And Mr. Rell, if you want to follow me for interviews and music for sure and anything else, really, you just be friends. You can DM me. So. <laughs> Peace, everybody.